G'day guys, Dan here. As you can see, we're back in the workshop. And today we're gonna to go through the beginnings and the very basics of TIG welding and what not to do when you first start TIG welding. All right, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, the very basics. First of all, clothing PPE. Make sure you're wearing long sleeves. Make sure everything is covered with gloves. If you don't, you'll get burnt. Cover up. Second of all, is welding helmet. Don't do what they, these guys do on YouTube and just grab some sunglasses and just tape it over. Don't do that. Make sure you have a proper welding helmet. This one here is an, an auto darkening one. Uh, this one is absolutely awesome. But yeah, proper helmet or else you'll also go blind eventually. Oh, right. So you used to, you used to be a tradesman before? Oh. His blinding insight. This edge here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, moving on. You also need a welder. Um, depending on what materials you're welding, whether you need AC or DC. We're welding stainless today, so we're gonna be using the DC function uh, and gas. We're TIG welding, so predominantly, we're just gonna use argon. Most things, you just use argon. All right, let's start welding. First of all, PPE, pop the helmet. He's blinding inside. All right, guys, just before you go and start laying down some massive beads and real colorful rainbow looking welds, there's a couple of things that you really need to do and to dial in to make sure that you can get those colorful beads. First of all is your gas flow. Um, I have mine at a range of anywhere between 10 and 15 liters a minute. Um, it does vary depending on the type of world you're doing, whether it's uh, gonna just be on a flat surface or a butt or an outside corner. Outside corner, you're gonna need more gas because the gas would be flowing flowing down the two sides and actually flowing away. But you need slightly less. Anywhere between there, 12, 13 liters is perfect. Next thing is welder. You can stick weld on, sorry, not, we're not stick welding, we're TIG welding. We're gonna be TIG welding, we're obviously gonna use DC. I'm not gonna use the pulse function today because we don't need to. Mine's gonna be controlled by the foot pedal. Obviously that means I've got a high frequency start. If you guys have a scratch start or whatever other start there is, that's fine too. When it comes to tungsten, because we're welding uh, stainless, we're not gonna use zirconiated. Just had to check that one, make sure I was right. Do I give you wrong information? Anyway, next thing is tungsten. Now, there's different diameter tungstens that you can buy, 1.6, 2.4, 3.2, blah, 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 blah. We're only welding 1.2 for this test, so 1.6 is fine. We're gonna use thoriated because it's we're welding in DC and stainless. If you're welding aluminium, you need to use zirconiated and don't mix them up or else that'll be really, really bad and things just blow up and everything else like that. So just do that. Um, gas lens, gas lenses are awesome just to really make the gas come out real nice and fine and come out consistent. The next big thing is tungsten stick out. As you can see here, my tungsten sticking out between eight to nine millimeters. I find for me that's perfect and I still get a perfect gas coverage. If you're obviously welding like an internal corner, you can stick it out a little bit further and still have that gas, gas coverage, but have a play with it and you'll be able to see. We can go on about pre and post flow, but so I don't overwhelm you guys, we're just gonna say that the gas starts and the gas stops when we hit the foot pedal. All right, guys, now before we actually start laying rainbow dimes, there's a couple of things we need to talk about with this tungsten. The major one being how far or how close your tungsten is to the actual workspace. So if your tungsten is too far, you're gonna get your, the arc's gonna wander all over the shop and you're gonna be classed as Mr. Squiggle. If your tungsten's too close, you're gonna get inclusion in the world and you're gonna stop and start and the world's gonna be really, really bad. So what you need to do is you need to aim to be about one to two millimeters above the workpiece like so, and then with your hands, as you're moving, you need consistency. You need to consistently run your hand along the workpiece to get a consistent line. Another good thing to do is when you're wanting to start, 
is to actually get lines, just draw lines on your workpiece. Now you're only starting out, so it does not matter. Again, the last thing you want is a squiggly world and all the blokes at your TAFE or your college or at your workplace call you squiggles because you're welding like this, okay? You don't want that. You want nice, straight welds that are consistent time and time again. And that only comes with practice, all right? Now that you know all that information, let's start laying dimes. All right, guys, the, the cameras will get a little bit funny. We've had to adjust them just for the welding, but you guys will get the picture and you guys will fully understand it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a weld pool. So you can see here, I've created that weld pool. You can see if I lift up, you can see you can't really make anything consistent. It's all over the shop. We bring it back down, it's nice. You can actually control it really, really easy. And that's what we're trying to create. Just trying to create that whirlpool. You see me moving it around and in full control of it. All right, guys, now we're gonna actually run a dead straight bead just to show you the consistency that you need to have. As you can see, the tungsten to the material is a consistent distance away, about one to two millimeters. Now I'm moving at a nice, consistent speed. So you can see that, it looks like a colorful slug. That's what you're looking for, to be able to just control the world in and everywhere around it. All right guys, we're on another one. Uh, well, what I want to show you is something a little bit different. Instead of running dead straight like that, we're actually just gonna almost leapfrog it and show you the effect it has on the actual world. So you get the whirlpool happening and then leapfrog it like this. Now this will actually give you a completely different effect. There's no, no real need for it. There's no real advantage of doing it. It just looks cool. And as you can see there, it actually looks like dimes on dimes. So almost like you got fill wire, but you haven't. Practice makes perfect. Guys, I've been welding 15 years and I'm still learning things, critiquing the way I do things just to make how I weld better and more efficient. All right, let's weld one more. We'll do one more complete stretch, about 50 mil long, just to give you guys a good idea. So again, there's nothing wrong with um, putting your ceramic shrouds and resting or resting your ceramic, sh ceramic shroud on the actual stainless. If that makes it steady, so be it. The tungsten is a consistent uh, distance away from the material. I've got my weld pool and it's nice and, nice and it's just leading nicely. If you go too fast, this is what happens. You actually lose your weld pool and actually nothing happens. It just looks like a big mess. As you can see there, the whirlpool is just able to keep up, but it's literally pointless. Okay, that's going too fast. Here you can see we're going a little bit too slow. So it's all about consistency and speed. Consistency with your tungsten away from uh, the material or as close to the material as you can. We'll do run one more, which will just make a nice, perfect run. You can see we're just leading that weld pool. We're actually pushing the weld. You don't want to pull it, you always want to be pushing it. Nice and consistent, nice and steady, nice and straight. As you can see guys, that's, that's fairly straight. You can actually see the uh, different coloration. Uh, in this instance, the only reason why I have a, a lighter color here compared to here is I actually sped up here a little bit. So it's not as heat affected as what this is here. Okay guys, 
And just to run through the actual four worlds we just did, this first one was the very first one we did, just showing you how they actually weld with the tungsten just being the correct distance away and speed. This next one was that little uh, like frog jump one where we held it and then moved it and moved it and moved it like in this type of format, it wasn't a consistent run. Um, there's no real benefit to doing this over this other than the fact that that just looks probably a little bit neater and a little bit nicer. This one here is where we started off at a consistent uh, speed and then all of a sudden we sped all the way up. And as you can see, the whirlpool dropped from about four or five millimeters in width down to just under a millimeter. Now that is just going way too fast and it's absolutely pointless. There's just, it does nothing. This one here, this last one just shows you where we started off, so a little bit quick, and then we slowed down because you can see that in the color change. And about here, you can see we've actually sped up. Um, you can notice that in the actual coloration of the actual world, uh, it's actually a little bit cooler. So you get a little bit more of the rainbow effect, a little bit of the darker colors. All right, guys, there you have it. That's the very brief, very basics about welding. Um, there's a heck of a lot more into it when it comes to your materials, your thicknesses, uh, even gases. Um, but this just gives you the basic fundamentals of actually how to strike an arc, how to get that weld pool, how to control that weld pool. That's, that's probably the most critical thing that I'm actually trying to teach you in this specific video is controlling that weld pool. And probably the, mo the, the biggest thing to understand is that this will take time to master. And if you talk to welders in their 50s and 60s, they'll tell you that they still haven't mastered it yet. The good ones will tell you that anyway. Um, so guys, keep practicing, do this. You will make mistakes, you will stuff up, you will get frustrated. Stick with it, practice makes perfect and you guys will see the evolution of where you started uh, to where you basically will become. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week. Uh, stay tuned. We've got new fire pits releasing next Tuesday, so check them out, and we'll talk to you soon.